So Lee, let's start with, with the crux of it. Thursday platform goes open source. So, so uh, kind of give us some sense of the scale of that. What does it mean? Mm. Well, it's a huge, huge milestone. Um, at one level, it's never been done before. I mean, a migration effort taking proprietary code of this scale, uh, tens and tens of millions of lines of code developed over eight to 10 years, have established themselves as a de facto standard in mobile technology, um, at one point running 70 plus percent of the world's smartphones, um, and it's all been migrated to open source, given away to the world for free, for development, for advanced evolution, and we've done so four to five months ahead of schedule, um, ahead of what was originally a very aggressive plan and a plan that a lot of people in the industry said couldn't be completed on time anyway. So this, this is a uh, you know, significant milestone, one uh, I think we can build on and continue to build some momentum behind. What does it mean though if I'm a developer, what changes for me come Thursday? Well, one of the, the key changes is it's more about empowering the individual developer. What uh, the phrase in the industry is a long tail developer, somebody who um, is motivated, passionate, uh, intrigued uh, by software, hardware technology, this type of thing, but may not work in a larger corporate or company context to develop. They may be, uh, in other words, a one to two to four man shop. Uh, they could be an all volunteer army that just likes to do things in their spare time. It's this type of developer that can now come in, download a kit, get access to the code, learn about it, tweak it, uh, extend it, um, mash it up and do unique things, build on top of it. Um, so in this way, I think for that type of developer, um, this is a watershed moment and something where they, they get access to what is a, a rare option that will occur in their lifetime. Are we gonna do anything more for them that's simply in, than just give them the code though? Sure, sure. I mean, you know, part of the momentum behind this, now that we have a lot of this done, I mean, there's some more work to do throughout the year, just in, in making more and more code available. There's more work to be done just in continuing to get contributions from elsewhere um, to build on this code base. But, you know, for that developer in particular, now we can focus on improving and simplifying the tool chain, taking the tool chain cross-platform, um, enabling a content developer who doesn't know memory management in Symbian C++ uh, to also develop here. So those with web technology and scripting experience um, will now be able to come in and access a more simplified kit, get access to tools and capabilities, get direct support from the foundation uh, for that type of work. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think for them, it, it means that we get to free up a little bit more to help them in other areas like tools, promotion through the Horizon program, fix other things in, in uh, providing a, a short path to the channel in the marketplace, uh, those other things that are out there in the industry and may be in that developer's way. So it's, it's key. Do you have a, somebody who should now get involved with the Symbian platform as opposed to competitor platforms like the obvious one being Android? I think the key to, to looking at the, the benefits of the Symbian platform versus any other is the same as looking around and saying, do you want to be and have something that has mass market appeal, that does so on a global basis, um, that has a truly open and uh, uh, you know, influenceable um, you know, state and, and capability? I mean, these are the reasons why you'd want to do it. By, by far, by many factors, uh, the largest addressable market opportunity, by far, by many factors, the uh, best opportunity to get into emerged and growing markets like China, uh, other parts of Asia, um, the subcontinent of, uh, of India, further into, into Europe, um, and then of course, you know, North America remains a, a high growth area as well. So I think, it, you know, it's do you want to deliver something with the world's largest um, mass marketplace of consumers that also love mobile? then, you know, when compared to the competition, Symbian is that choice. And in terms of those guys that are taking on packages as well, uh, is that, is that um, a market opportunity that we're starting to open up for, say, companies like Ixinox? Sure, sure. I mean, that is one of the, the key measures as to whether or not any of this is any good or, or uh, is progress versus not. It has to do with that ecosystem. Our, multiple companies, companies other than just device manufacturers as an example, 
able to come in and invest and then see a sustainable return on that investment. And that's the fundamental question here. And when you give those packages over and when you get contributions from companies like Ixenos, companies like Sun, uh, now Oracle, uh, and, and the other individual developers and providers out there, when, when you empower them in that way through that package ownership or get that contribution from them, then what you're doing is providing that direct link to that return on investment for them because you're feeding their business model in a, uni in a unique way. You're giving them a, a leveraged access point into that mass marketplace that they didn't have before. Um, and so, yeah, I think this is a, a huge opportunity for some of those companies. And part of what, what this milestone means is now individual developers and those one-man shops can come in and participate at that same level as any of those large corporations. And uh, th this is really key for them.